It was an ordinary day at the international airport, filled with the usual hustle and endless lines. People hurried along, dragging suitcases, trying to find their gates while glancing at the flight boards, boarding announcements, takeoffs, delays, and calls for calm, typical of a major airport. In this chaotic scene, people barely noticed each other, absorbed in their own problems and rush. Among the crowd, a man in his 50s walked confidently. Daryl Johnson was someone who was not accustomed to waiting in long lines or adjusting to flight schedules. As the owner of a major airline, he stood at the pinnacle of the business world. His day was meticulously planned to the minute. Wearing a suit from top designers and carrying a leather briefcase, he made his way to the private terminal where his personal jet awaited him. There wasn't a hint of anxiety on Daryl's face. He was a man used to control. Today, he had an important meeting with international partners, and he was already thinking through the details of the upcoming negotiations. Everything was under control, as always. But in a few minutes, his world would be turned upside down. As Daryl approached the security checkpoint, his eyes met those of a police officer. The tall, white officer in uniform immediately seemed to become wary as soon as he spotted Daryl. With an air of superiority, the officer stepped closer, his eyes filled with suspicion, as if Daryl were somehow dangerous. This was a far too common experience for pawn for black men, no matter how well dressed or what status they held. The officer began the conversation harshly, not even trying to appear polite. He addressed Daryl as if he were a criminal, not a law-abiding traveler. Hey, you, he called out, not even bothering to address him as sir. What are you doing here? Daryl could have been outraged, but he knew all too well how important it was to keep his composure in these situations. He was used to the suspicion his race aroused, no matter his wealth or success. Instead of irritation, he calmly pulled out his documents, showing the officer his passport and ticket. I'm headed for my private flight, he explained evenly, maintaining a polite tone. Here are my documents. But instead of simply checking the papers and apologizing for the inconvenience, the officer chose to escalate the situation. He didn't even glance at the passport or ticket, his gaze remaining sharp and full of bias. His tone grew even more condescending. Are you sure these are real? He sneered. Something doesn't seem right here. Before Daryl could respond, the officer suddenly grabbed his arm and yanked him to the side, as if planning to arrest him on the spot. The force with which the officer seized him was excessive, and the crowd around them froze in shock. This was a blatant display of aggressive power. Daryl was stunned. He hadn't expected things to take such a turn. The officer continued shouting accusations that made no sense. You're being detained on suspicion of illegal activity, the officer said, not giving Daryl a chance to explain. A crowd of passengers began gathering, watching the scene unfold. Some looked puzzled. Others were clearly shocked, but no one intervened. People seemed accustomed to such displays, police abusing their power, especially when it involved black men. They had seen it on the news, but witnessing it in person felt even more absurd and unjust. Daryl tried to stay composed, despite his growing anger. It was clear to him, this wasn't just a mistake. This was pure racial bias. The officer wasn't even trying to listen. He was acting purely on his prejudices. Listen, Daryl said calmly, I own an airline and my plane is waiting for me at the private terminal. All my documents are in order. I've done nothing wrong. But the officer wasn't interested in hearing him out. He was determined to demonstrate his authority and had no intention of admitting he might be wrong. This was a typical situation where someone in power decided that the difference in skin color gave them the right to be rude and humiliating. Oh, you own an airline, do you? The officer said mockingly, looking Daryl up and down. What's next? You'll tell me you own this airport too? The crowd continued to watch in silence, some biting their lips in frustration but no one dared step in. This wasn't just an arrest. This was an act of humiliation. In the officer's eyes, Daryl wasn't a successful businessman. He was just another suspicious black man, and that hurt more than anything. Despite the humiliation, Daryl knew one thing. He wouldn't remain silent. 
He had overcome a lot in life to reach his position, and he wasn't about to let some prejudiced officer tear it all down. The officer was already preparing the handcuffs, but Daryl was ready for whatever came next. He didn't need to shout or resist. He knew that truth and justice were on his side. Ahead of him lay a real fight for dignity and fairness. As Daryl stood there, his hands cuffed behind his back, everything happening seemed surreal. The officer, who had slapped the handcuffs on with clear overzealousness, appeared to be relishing the situation, unaware that he was dealing with one of the most influential figures in the aviation industry. The crowd around him watched silently, no one stepping forward. People looked on with detached curiosity, their gazes reflecting anything but empathy. At that moment, Daryl suddenly felt how alone he was in the crowd. He was a successful businessman, the owner of an airline, a man used to respect and recognition. But in the eyes of this officer and the silent onlookers, he was now just another suspicious black man. His status, his achievements, all of that suddenly didn't matter. The only thing that seemed to matter at that moment was the color of his skin. The officer continued pushing him toward the police car, clearly enjoying the process. There wasn't a single familiar face around to stand up for him, or at least try to sort out the situation. I said you're under arrest and there's nothing you can do about it, the officer barked, dragging Daryl to the car. Daryl tried to remain calm, though anger boiled inside him. He knew too well that any word spoken in anger could be used against him. So he kept his composure, even though he wanted to scream. This was a moment where his sense of dignity battled with the urge to explode in the face of injustice. I've already told you, all my documents are in order, Daryl said evenly, looking the officer straight in the eye. You haven't even given me a proper chance to show them. Yeah, sure, the officer responded mockingly. I've heard that story before. The police officer clearly didn't believe a single word Daryl said. In his mind, the stereotype had already formed a black man in an expensive suit, therefore suspicious. His task, as he saw it, was to catch a criminal, and he was convinced he'd found one. The crowd continued to watch silently. Some were recording the scene on their phones, others whispering among themselves, but no one stepped in. It was a typical scene of modern life, where people preferred to witness injustice rather than try to stop it. In their eyes, this was just another incident. Someone arrested, someone accused, and likely it would all be sorted out later. But in that moment, no one realized the significance of what was happening. For the officer, it was just another case. For the crowd, it was merely another scene. But for Daryl, it was one of the most humiliating moments of his life. He was used to being seen as a successful and respected individual. Yet here, in this airport, he had become just a suspect. The years he had spent building his career and achieving success seemed to vanish in the eyes of this officer in a single moment. Are you sure you don't want to think twice before making things worse? Daryl asked calmly, once again trying to appeal to the officer. You really don't understand what you're doing right now. But the officer continued to ignore his words, seeing them as empty threats. Come on, get in the car, the officer snapped, opening the door and shoving Daryl inside. Sitting in the car, Daryl felt his anger rising, but he also knew he couldn't afford to show it. Not yet. He couldn't lose control, especially not now. But the humiliation, being detained in front of a crowd of people, none of whom intervened, weighed on him the most. While the officer filled out paperwork by the car, Daryl noticed the phones in the hands of the passers-by. Some were filming, others were taking pictures. On a few faces there was judgment and disdain, but no one dared to approach and ask what was happening. At that moment, Daryl realized just how deeply ingrained bias was in society, where the color of your skin could decide your fate in a matter of seconds. He wasn't unfamiliar with prejudice, but this instance cut deeper. In front of dozens of people, his reputation was being threatened, all because the officer had jumped to conclusions based on stereotypes. The crowd around had already made up their minds. They saw a black man in handcuffs, and that was enough. But Daryl knew one thing. This wouldn't just be dismissed as a simple mistake. 
He had never let injustice triumph over him, and this time would be no different. Plans were already forming in his mind about how he would act moving forward. First, he needed to get out of this humiliating situation, but afterward, he wasn't going to let it go. As they drove to the station, Daryl knew that this day would change a lot, not just for him, but for those who would follow this story. As the police car slowly pulled away from the security checkpoint, Daryl sat in the back seat, watching as the airport and the crowd disappeared behind him. Inside him, a storm was brewing, a mixture of humiliation, anger, and resolve. He understood that this wasn't just a random arrest. This was an event that would become a symbol of the fight against systemic injustice. As the car drove, Daryl knew that to the officer, he was still just another win on the job, but the officer had no idea who he was really dealing with. Daryl Johnson wasn't just an ordinary passenger. He was the owner of one of the largest airlines in the country. This was not a man you could simply mistreat. And now it was time to show that true power didn't lie in aggression and handcuffs, but in knowing how to use your resources and connections. As soon as the car stopped at the police station, Daryl maintained his calm, despite the storm of emotions inside him. The officer pulling him out of the car continued treating him like just another detainee. But this was his last mistake. Listen, Daryl said coldly, looking the officer directly in the eyes. You're making a very big mistake. My team is already working on this, and I suggest you rethink your actions before it's too late. The officer only smirked in response, completely unaware of the consequences that awaited him. To him, this was just another day on the job, and he saw nothing out of the ordinary in arresting a black man at the airport. But soon, his overconfidence would come crashing down. As soon as Daryl was brought into the station, he exercised his right to one phone call. He didn't call friends or family. He called his lawyer, someone who had worked with him for years and knew exactly how to handle situations like this. George, Daryl said calmly when he heard his lawyer's voice on the other end, I need you to get the whole team on this. This isn't going unnoticed. We need to make sure everyone knows what's going on. George, an experienced attorney, didn't ask any unnecessary questions. He knew that if Daryl was calling, the situation was serious. Within minutes, Daryl's legal team was already in action. One phone call and chaos erupted at the airport. Directors and managers quickly learned that the man arrested wasn't just another passenger, but the owner of one of the largest airlines, whose planes flew out of their terminals. Phones started ringing, and the information spread rapidly through the upper echelons of the airport's administration. This wasn't something they could cover up or ignore. Meanwhile, the officer continued acting as if everything was going according to plan. He was filling out the paperwork, unaware that outside the walls of the station, a scandal was brewing that would soon turn against him. He had no idea that the man he had arrested could ruin his career in a matter of hours. Daryl waited, but he didn't feel helpless. On the contrary, he knew that this officer had already lost, even if he didn't realize it yet. This wasn't the first time Daryl had faced injustice, but it was the first time he had been at the center of such a public humiliation. He wasn't going to remain silent, and this case would become a loud reminder to anyone who abused their power. Soon, representatives from the airport and several of Daryl's lawyers began arriving at the station. For the officer, this was an unexpected development. He didn't understand why so many influential people were suddenly gathering around the man he had detained. A feeling of discomfort began to set in as he saw airport officials talking with his superiors, demanding an immediate investigation. What's going on here? One of the airport officials asked, confused as he addressed the police officer, who still hadn't grasped the gravity of his actions. Just a routine arrest, the officer replied smugly. This guy was acting suspicious. I'm just doing my job. But to the airport representatives, this was no ordinary suspicious guy. This was Daryl Johnson, a man whose airplanes they relied on for their flights a man whose millions flowed through the aviation industry and whose connections stretched far beyond national borders. Do you even know who you've arrested? Daryl's lawyer finally spoke with cold sarcasm, staring the officer down. 
The officer froze. He had never encountered anything like this before. What he thought was a routine arrest was turning against him. This is the owner of the airline, the lawyer continued. You've just made the biggest mistake of your career, and trust me, the consequences will be severe. The officer paled. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Until that moment, he had been certain he was in the right. But now, everything he had done had turned from a simple violation of a citizen's rights into a scandal that would soon break beyond the walls of the airport and possibly even the city. By this point, Daryl knew the victory was near. He wasn't going to stop here. The officer hadn't just made a mistake. He had showcased how bias and abuse of power remained major problems in society. And Daryl was ready to show the world that such actions wouldn't go on unpunished. The officer stood stunned as the realization of his actions finally hit him. Around him, everything was changing quickly. Airport management, lawyers, and police department supervisors began conversing, and the atmosphere in the station grew tense. He felt his once confident attitude crumble as his mistake became obvious to everyone. The officer, who thought he was just doing his job, found himself at the center of a national scandal. Daryl, sitting calmly on a bench in the police station, watched the unfolding events with cold composure. He knew that now everything would go according to his plan. This was the moment when real power revealed itself. He didn't need to yell or make a scene. He was a man who always relied on professionalism and his connections, and now they were working at full capacity. Daryl's lawyers quickly took control of the situation. They demanded his immediate release, and the police department's leadership, who had already learned who their officer had arrested, was in shock. The officer, so certain of his actions just an hour earlier, now stood by the wall, watching the chaos unravel before him. His confidence had vanished. He knew something terrible was coming, but he couldn't yet grasp the full extent of it. You need to release Mr. Johnson immediately, one of the lawyers sharply stated to the station's chief, or we will file lawsuits not only against the department, but personally against every individual involved in this violation of his rights. The station chief was clearly shaken. He didn't want this case to spiral into something bigger, but now it was too late. Daryl Johnson was a powerful man, and his arrest had already become public knowledge. Within hours, the entire country would know what had happened. The media had already started getting leaks about the arrest of the airline owner, and the situation was only escalating. The officer, who had been silent all this time, suddenly realized he needed to defend himself. He tried to justify his actions to his superiors, but his voice sounded weak and uncertain. I... I was just doing my job. He seemed suspicious to me. But no one was listening to him anymore. The police department wasn't going to protect him this time. In situations like this, the system quickly shifts tactics, and now the officer wasn't a hero, but a liability, one they needed to distance themselves from as fast as possible. That's no excuse, the chief snapped in cold frustration. You didn't even properly check his documents. You arrested the owner of an airline based on your biased assumptions, and now we're all paying for your stupidity. The officer finally grasped the full scale of his mistake. He tried to hide his fear, but his face betrayed him. He knew that his career had ended the moment he placed handcuffs on Daryl Johnson. Daryl, who had maintained his calm throughout, was finally released. The handcuffs were removed, and the police authorities began issuing apologies. They tried to smooth over the situation, but it was already too late. He knew this case would serve as an example of what happens when power is abused. I hope this incident serves as a lesson, Daryl said, looking the officer directly in the eyes. My team will handle this, and rest assured, this won't go unnoticed. The officer only nodded silently, realizing that his life would never be the same. Daryl Johnson wasn't someone who would let this situation die down. He wasn't interested in small, local, legal battles. He planned to take this case to a federal level. This incident would become a prime example of systemic bias and injustice, and the officer, who hadn't even bothered to find out whom he had arrested, would be the first to face the consequences.
The media quickly picked up the story, and within hours, news of a black airline owner being unjustly arrested at the airport spread across all outlets. The public was outraged. This case served as yet another reminder that bias was still deeply ingrained in the justice system. A few days later, the officer was fired. His career collapsed as quickly as his confidence did when he realized who he had arrested. Public apologies and justifications from the police department couldn't fix the damage. Their reputation was tarnished, and this case would go down in history as one of the biggest scandals of the year. For Daryl, this wasn't just a personal triumph. It was a victory over a system that he had oppressed people like him for years because of the color of their skin. But he knew this was only the beginning. This case had to be a signal to everyone who had ever faced injustice, showing that it was possible and necessary to fight back. Daryl returned to his work, but now he had a new project in mind. He decided to invest resources into combating bias and discrimination in law enforcement. For him, this case wasn't just a personal victory. It was the starting point for broader change. 